I know Frank. And then Tom, So we're going to get some I know. And then well, let's just figure out how we can charge I mean, I do the same thing. Hire me on camera. You turn that in today. Yeah, he's very good. You turn that in today. Yeah. Got yeah. that in there, please. Yeah. All right. When, when, when we met, he was just thinking. No, yeah, no, I started out with a suite. Uh, it's all coming together. Really nice to use the land that you're on the main. You better talk to John. I'm going to switch over it to me. I need an F1, obviously. Okay, well, he's in your house. Thank you. 
I know it's yeah, and so without them, no one will survive. They don't have a buyer that's near them. And if they're going to have applications for manufactured products, it's kind of going to be every little thing. Well, we would like to revisit all that. Good. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and um, get started. I think the easiest will be just to go around the room and introduce yourself, and then we'll move to the phone. So, um, you want to start, Amanda, Amanda with the executive office? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sandy with planning and building. <laughs> Sarah with the executive office. Brent Schultz, the planning and building services so director. Yes, yes, no. Can I have one in there? I'm Josh Friedman with James Madison District. Julia Carrera, Julia Carrera and Associates. Kimberly Delacover Tate, One Feather Ranch, the Bader, and part of the Bader. Here with Mark. Andy. Andy Bialski. Gracie Keller. Oh, we know you. We'll be sure. <laughs> Corinne Powell. Marvin Levin. Petra Buchanan. Do not put. And then James, are you there? Oh yes, uh, James Clare from Flocana on the phone here. And then Hannah, are you there? I am. Thanks. I don't, I don't know who named your thing to us. No, it's there's two people. That's the oh, 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 discussion about people wanting to share the email addresses of the group members with one another. And what we've done in previous groups is we have that group decide if that's appropriate and okay and if you're okay with everyone knowing your email address. Because I think typically we send things out with a blind copy. So um, if you aren't okay with it, now is the time to say so. If not, then we can get share all your email addresses with each other. Don't we get your email addresses too? You have. <laughs> I think everyone has me email. If you want it, I'll give you my card. All right. Yeah. Hearing no no's, we'll go into the fun part. Um, so what we've talked about in the past is we're going to go kind of um, license type through license type, and the first two that were the most um, at the top of the list was first micro business followed by manufacturing. And so Vandy um, is just going to give an update. We did talk about a lot of the items for micro business, and so they've been looking at that and reviewing it. And we can give a more detailed report at the next one. So he's going to talk about that. Then we had two other outstanding issues around micro business that were brought up that we didn't have time to actually do discussion on. So we're hoping to do um, additional discussion on those two items. Add anything else that we need to talk about micro business, and if we have time, we can start on manufacturing. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, um, Sandy. Thank you. Um, so I was able to speak with our chief planner, Julia ecker -Krog. I'm not sure how many of you have met with her at any point. Um, but we were open, so what we discussed last meeting was having micro-businesses be a standalone license in which you, you don't have it tied to a home occupation or a cottage industry. Additionally, we also talked about micro-businesses without even cultivation, just as they stand alone license in certain rural areas. And what we discussed, or what me and Julia had discussed, was that this it is possible. The issue, however, with moving forward is that it will require a CEQA analysis, which 
the whole process from start to finish would take about a year. So that is really the big issue that we, it's not that we can't move forward on that, it's that if we do choose to move forward, um, which I think this working group would have to tell the board that this is the direction that we want to take, um, it's just going to unfortunately be a long process to, to remove the home requirements and such. Yes. Does everybody here know what's involved in the CEQA process? I do. Somewhat, yeah. I think you might want to explain that. And then there are costs involved in that to the person, the applicant. So large, substantial costs. Oh, so this is per applicant. This is not like a countywide thing that you're doing CEQA for. The it, it really depends on the analysis. It's difficult to, because we haven't even uh, proposed regulations that would be a micro business without the home occupation or cottage industry, we don't have anything to analyze. And so it's difficult to determine if it would be, so when you do a CEQA analysis, there are, for just to simplify it, there's three kind of routes you can take. There's a categorical exemption. Which is what we have now for our ordinance. Correct. And we would not be able to once if we did this, because right now everything is tied to existing uses, which is how we got the categorical exemption. Then there's what's called a negative declaration, which means the project has been reviewed and it's been determined that absolutely or very few environmental impacts will occur. And then the last one would be a complete environmental impact report, which is most likely what we would have to adopt. And then during the process, you would do an initial study and that would tell you which. Oh, yeah, sorry. So the initial which study is what dictates. Yeah. Path evaluation. Yeah. So through the initial study, you either end up as the negative declaration or the environmental impact report. And if I would say if we're going to go down that CEQA process, um, we may want to look at all of the changes that you would want to go. Yeah. We yeah. No. It would go down like it's You want to cover you everything. You want to cover everything and, so we don't have to go back. And we did yeah, discuss you don't want that to go back. This, if we did do an EIR, we first would have to, as a working group, determine what changes we want to the ordinance because we would want this EIR to capture everything. Yeah. And there are costs involved to you that you have to provide them so they can conduct that. So, you know, it's archaeological reports, bioassessments, what else? Well, it also well, depends, on, depends on the pathway you go forward with because you're developing an ordinance and during that process you would then determine what threshold of discretionary review is needed. Right. So it could be a combination of ministerial, AP, UP, so you, it's kind of like as you're doing the initial study on the ordinance, you have to make those decisions of which, which types of development become a new threshold. Is that right? But the other counties are requiring that, yeah. just so you know. They might have to study track. Is it going to impact traffic flows? Right, exactly. Highways on those off ramps and different Pedestrian. Areas. How many guests are going to come? How, how many, many visitors? It's, a, it's quite an You're there. introducing a whole other use that isn't there. Correct. You know, and we just got to look at the impacts. Otherwise, what will happen? Like if we just went and did it and said you can do it, we'll get sued, <laughs> guaranteed. And then we have to stop issuing permits. We have to go back and do an EIR. To, to allow the use. I don't know that this is the best pathway from my perspective. I that's the EIR. If you have a residence, right? Then you have to right. for micro business without a residence, then you have to get the I mean probably what we would do is we'd probably take a, a similar um, regulations that are used in the home walking cottage industry because that's one of the reasons we tied the micro business was because there was a lot of kind of limitations that that allowed. So we would probably kind of bring those over mm -hmm. to the new regulations, just not have that a residence is required to even perform this. I, I had it explained to me actually by a couple of people, but uh, Ted Williams, to, to he described a comparison of another county that you were looking at. Uh, I think it was Monterey, but I could be wrong with that. Okay. It was, um, they managed to get it down to quite a few months from here, and it was like 120 total. Um, so then that's two counties, that's not two people to be studied. And that was a, a general, not a program, uh, but a, a general, um, you know, complete CEQA. And they were really lucky in, in uh, Monterey County, they have specific areas that have been abandoned by previous industries. Mm -hmm. So they were able to take some of these areas and essentially redevelop. So, um, 
Do you think that it was worth doing as you described it as less honorous as what the was? Yeah, I mean, this is such a moderate. It's really. I mean, we can drive the moderate. We do. We enjoy the lots of stuff that. Um, and micro business but, might be micro business and cultivation sites are a little bit different well, than yeah. like redeveloping an area to make it easier to manufacture. I would say counties are also different. So not to say that that's not a good example. We would just have to see right. the kind of the baseline for them compared to us. I understand. Yeah. It's a different situation. But how would this also impact the coastal zone? So we're actually currently writing the coastal zone regulations at the moment. Sorry? You're writing a new LCP, but it's on my local coastal land. Um, no, we're not. No. That's no. $2 million to redo the coastal zone. <laughs> we're going to redo. Come on. Let's have one. I'd probably try to do a section of an amendment to it. Great. Uh, Are you going to open up the uh, coastal zone for? Uh, well, we're studying it. We're, being, we're studying it right now on that. We have to have talks with the coastal commission on that. And you know, we're just so you know, we're right now we're doing an accessory dwelling. You know, you know, the state of California adopted these accessory dwelling uh -huh. standards. We've adopted it now on, in the inland area. It's all done. We're now, we've been having meetings with the Coastal Commission staff uh, on, you know, and it's like you're mandated. You've got to adopt it as a county or city, right? Mm -hmm. And it's taken us time to work through it with them because, you know, their big concern is what about Highway 1? Right. We don't want a bunch of units and then all of a sudden Highway 1 getting jammed up. So, you know, we kind of, you know, we're going to be bringing this forward. One of the things I we kind of negotiated with our consultant is we'll cap it and then we'll let us start issuing them yeah. and then if it starts, Reach getting close to that cap, we'll stop and study, you know, where it's going. Now, I'm told on the coast of Mendocino, any units, it takes a long time to get the permits, and I'm told this on people who work at our coastal office, that it's a slow process to get uh, single family residential structures or anything permitted on the coast. So, well, but. Well, I talked to members of the Coastal Commission myself. I've been on yeah. for years because our whole our can of tourism depends on being able to open up the yeah. coastal zone and we're so hung up. And he said that the hang-ups were in the county of Mendocino, that you all were stopping much of the full progress. So I don't know what that means. If it's, uh, yeah, I don't know what he's, he said. Yeah, Bob yeah. Merrill, yeah. we're working great. I'm. I, Okay. I really like Bob. We're working well together. Had a great meeting on ADUs. You're going to see us. You'll see us come in March forward with an informational staff report to the board on ADUs on the coast. And then, you know, I'm hoping after that, vacation rentals. We're going to update that ordinance to give some more uh, clarity to how those are to be managed and monitored. And, so we'll and Matt, cannabis, and Matt, and Matt too. I want to say Matt started like in, yeah. in the last couple of months of. Of the yeah. yeah. so yeah. There's some sensitivities on that coast, as you know. We all want to protect it. And we are working. We don't want it to be hurt. Existing commercial zones, commercial zones yeah. in the coastal zones, are they going to be open up for uh, simple things like processing, distribution, and type? That's what we're going to be talking to them about. Okay. Is we're going to be talking okay. to them about all that stuff. And we'll so say the direction we are taking at the moment is similar to the inland way in which we've tied it to existing uses. Uh -huh. Otherwise, we're, again, looking at yeah. more than a year to, to amend it to allow uses yeah. beyond what's existing. Best case scenario, what kind of timeline are you looking at with this? On the cannabis on the coast? Yes. Right now, so we have, we've written the regulations and we're going to, County Council is a bit busy at the moment, but once they're free up, we're going to go to County Council and then bring it to the board. I, Maybe in the next two, three months for discussion. Maybe I hope this year, you know, we can bring something forward. This and year, I, we'll yeah. this by the end of this year. We can't wait that long. Yeah. No, we will have to yeah. shut down. We've I been appreciate for years now for you all to get this going. So yeah. um, that's not acceptable. Yeah, well, I appreciate your comments. Yes. Yes, yeah. 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 Sorry. I'm I'm only a little confused about. <clears throat> what is required in your mind now for CEQA and micro businesses if the micro business application is coming from a cultivator who is already vetted 
under the baseline initial study. So that base, why that would trigger CEQA. That baseline is for cultivation, not for micro businesses. And so what are you saying is going to be the negative impact that isn't understood? That's what we have to study. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. Yeah. We don't know what the impact We can probably, like, well, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> we can't just say that. No, that's not how it works. Well, we can't. Yeah. It doesn't work for the county. Environmental quality. So, so basically, just for everybody who's trying to figure out how to survive, and where to put their licensure dollars because you can't buy every license hoping that somehow you'll be able to do business properly. You're saying that it's a year probably for uh, uh, combined county and cannabis CEQA process with an EIR. It's a, probably at least a year. That's what you're thinking will probably happen. That's so that the conversation right no now. No micro business potential in at least a year. Well, outside of the existing scheme. Correct. So like if you did the home or cottage, you it, you can move forward? You can. So it really comes down to out of all these recommendations, what goes forward and what changes the board, what the changes you recommend and what the board ultimately does. That's why we're also saying put it all together. So one other, another good one, so it's, it, is, it kind of is what it is. So if you're going to make drastic changes outside of the current scheme to allow more flexibility and allow more use yeah. in an area where we typically wouldn't, there's going to be analysis and typically in the CEQA process is year. It could be less than. It can be. It can be. The standard is If it goes, but we're, we're probably not going to If it goes fast. smooth and, it go, and, you know, there's not big problems in mitigating it, it can go fast. I've done them very fast, mm -hmm. but it depends on the review process. You know, this is we are a general <laughs> We're under the state of California. It, they've adopted sequel. We have to comply with it. We can't just look the other way. We we'd love to figure out ways how to go faster and quicker, and we're trying to. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's we are, but just so you know, we're under, we're under sequel. Yeah. Under the state we, know, we know what you're saying, but yeah. if what you're saying is at least a year and potentially more. Yeah. People need to know that they have no hope of doing anything with a micro business for a very long time. That's all. And maybe we should even quit talking about it at some point because it's a waste of our time until you may want to you may want to consider talking with the board about what you think your priorities are. And I, I'm just going to say that just because you know simultaneously we're working on the coastal, which is big deal and we need to do it. We have the facility, big deal, we need to do it. We have cultivation, and then big deal, we have to do it. Accommodation district, got to do it. You know, uh, GMO, got to do it. Hemp, got to do it. So, you know, when you're talking about 15 staff and then possibly consultants, which could work if the board decides to priority and fund this. Yeah. So I think all of these things are incredibly important to the industry. And maybe one thing that you guys can help as a working group is advocating that this should be a priority yeah. and they should allocate the resources so we can push it up in line. I like that perspective. Process. Yeah, and I like that perspective because the board was the one that set the priorities without your input, right? They just heard public comment and then well, that the priorities. set priorities, I don't know, a year and a half ago when micro-business was at the top. Yeah, but remember a lot shut down and then they did that board meeting and created a whole new priority list. I mean, it's, and it's micro not as if that uh, sense of prioritization hasn't been done, is my point. It yeah. may help, though, at board meetings, instead of hearing cultivation, 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 we get someone that says, hey, manufacturing. <laughs> Hey, yeah. I know, we need a few. We need more voices. Josh should do that. Josh, you should get up there and start doing that. Yeah. You're, you're a manufacturer. Because I think, I think we're all on the same page, and we want yeah. to do well as much as we can and as quick as we can, but you're dipping into a lot of different pools, and I think we've got a great staff, and we're going forward with the prioritization and the, the needs of the board. Yeah, and I so think we're saying what they I, want now. I, of all people, you know, I. We'd love to see us go faster through a EIR process, you know. And I've got 35 years of looking at EIRs and when they started, and it's just they, the state gets more and more it's more and more complex process. But we will try, you know, if we get direction by the board to go fast as we possibly can with the resources we have. 
then uh, we just need direction, right? We take direction from the board. Do you know which department would be lead on the new EIR? It would probably be, I mm -hmm. assume it would be us. Because all of that's in their, their code. They'd have a higher consultant and right. select an EIR consultant and define the proc that, you know, what we want to do. And again, I think what Sarah said is really, we got to put everything in there. Because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go back. Go back, yeah. Because once you open it, you know, uh, open it up, you, every time you open it up, it's open to challenge. Again. Well, we just had not traditionally done that in the yeah. past three years. Don't call them. So I think that if we are yeah. to take that path, I think one of the things this working group should work on is to determine what those changes yeah. are so that we can bring that to the board as direction back to the planning authority. Yeah. But these are things we want included in. And yeah. so let's create a process for that. How would you like to structure that input? Do you have any okay. examples? <laughs> so we have, um, let me go over it. For the last meeting, we talked about looking at micro business as a standalone license and evaluation within the license type on the property, not here to cottage or home. Um, PBS looking at expanding the zone and updating the general plan on micro business license as a standalone and not necessarily to cultivation. Now we can go quickly through the things we've already talked about and then finish with these two. Do you want to talk about that one? Which one? Did I say that one? Oh. Thank you. So it looks like the, it's, it's been mostly micro business that our conversation mm -hmm. revolves around. So that means, I think, four or five other license types. Because most of the other stuff, the last one is really about the building and the F1 occupancy. Mm -hmm. um, the other two issues that we were going to talk about for micro business is the pathway to use administrative permits instead of a minor major use permit. And I think that's another good idea that yeah. we could incorporate because essentially if we do the upfront analysis, we can lower potentially yeah. the threshold and not make you pay for a use permit. Because the reason for that is that it, it's tied to the cottage permit. Right, right. So we have standalone license, and then that was the second one was the pathway for admin or an admin permit instead of major and minor use, which would potentially. That would offer a lot of financial relief for this that want to go down that path. And then the third one that was brought up during micro business was the threshold for a tiered micro business is done. So kind of a tiered life structure. And those are the three. Um, so the pathway to an administrative permit in place of a major or minor use permit, and that include being able to apply as a type one manufacturer or distributor or processor to uh, for permits in the commercial zone. Uh, it applies to everybody, doesn't it? I, I mean, it applies to everybody. I believe it's for the micro business license or the micro business. So if you wanted to, would that be a, a workaround if you were trying to conduct business and not had, didn't want to have to wait for the EIR process as the coastal zone to get all completely done? Would that be a, a way to do it? I mean, I'm just you trying mean, to you mean apply for another license? <clears throat> a micro business license as a standalone? In a commercial zone. You, 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 they, you can't. It's still tied in the, the current ordinance. No, but the, what they're recommending. Uh, they're recommending it be a standalone. standalone absolutely. But now you can't. Well, they're not recommending that's what we want. Andy, did, if they're in a commercial zone, I don't know how we did our environmental documents on the, under the old general, you know, the, the 2009 general plan, and they find a commercial zone, and they want to do a micro, the standalone yeah. micro. Yeah. That's allowed. Inland. No, that's allowed inland. With a yeah. administrative yeah. permit or use. That's a minor use, so maybe you still got that. Only in C2. It's and you would, think, you would think, Mandy, that, you know, you know, commercials are more intensified use, right? The right. EIR, they did back then with cover 
you know, how much busier would that micro business be than a retail shop that did exactly. shoes? You know, that's I what I, my question is going to be. Like, right. is this the same standard process for, like, let's say I'm going to open up floral, floral shop? Yeah. Right. And I think like, what's see, I would think this just me not, you know, looking at old general plans from mm -hmm. four cities. That that would, that as long as that micro business, we could make a case it's not any busier than a retail business. Yeah. Well, if you, it would be a, then a, to compare well, so okay. the problem with that is right. that in the commercial district, one cultivation is not allowed. So then you have to do retail distribution and manufacturing, and manufacturing is not just a, a permissible use of commercial. But that's type the, one, that's the question. Can you type one is like if type one is to be its own license type? No, it's not allowed. Like in a in a, as a permitted use without a use permit. Or you something. can do this standalone, this hypothetical standalone micro business license and do distribution. Uh, what about industrial? What about industrial? Do you want to do any commercial entity? Because there are only six hundred the county. Yeah, it would be per permitted without the business a license. Yes. Whereas the manufacturing is what knocks it up to the, the so, administrative. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that would be my next question. Yeah. Manufacturing type one couldn't be separated out from manufacturing type two and put in the same category because it's it's no more impactful than processing and distribution, for example. So you're saying type one and type wait separate 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 separate
uh, what? No, no, to what? I, I get that, but located next to what? It's a zoning? What is it? There is no set thing. It's very, you know, some parcels are east or they're west of Highway 1, so those are subject to the Coastal Commission. Some are west of Highway 1, but they're still subject to the Coastal Commission. It's not. Okay. It's, it's, yeah, got it. The line, so it's within the line. Certain, got it. certain Thank parcels you. that are exempt from Coastal Commission review. That's what okay. I'm saying. And those okay. parcels, there's yeah. no formula to figure out what's in the Right. But, yeah, it varies. But, Look okay. at the boundaries. Oh, okay, yeah, I get it now. I, I thought it was for zoning. So Other well. communities such as Eureka have been able to get the Coastal Commission to approve having different businesses, different kinds of businesses in the commercial area of the coastal zone. Right. And they didn't take all of this. So Are they doing it by... But that's what... what by the right? right? I'm sorry? Is it ministerial by right? They can sign your business license with counter? Or do you have to go through to like zoning administrator to get approval? No, they did not go through that. The administrator. Well, they didn't go through a use permit. I'm not sure about administrator. But it might have been a zone clearance. Have you talked yeah. to Humboldt County um, Building and Planning uh, Director? I have not. I'm brand new here. So you might want to reach phone. out and, yeah. and ask and see what they did with the proposal done. It might be very helpful. And you are looking at, you, Eureka already, that's an adopted ordinance. This is creating the ordinance. So it's yeah, yeah. kind of two separate things. Well, yes and no. I mean, you know, who knows when they talked and who knows how it all worked out. But I think by talking to the Humboldt County, yeah, we'll going into the, yeah. yeah and then we're not guessing at anything. We'll actually know. We want to hear. Yeah. I like to know what Sonoma's doing. I like to know what every, you know, everybody. Yes, no, it's not. Okay. They're not? No. Yeah, check out, you know, other monitoring and managers. So Sonoma's not issuing any permits right now? I can send you a list of what all the, social, all the county folks are doing. Um, hopefully we're the most well-liked. Who's <laughs> <laughs> that? No? Yep. Look at they laugh. Yeah, do you have numbers available of how many other non-cultivation permits have been issued? By tax collector does. Yeah, I can pull it up right now. Could you pull it just just to give us an idea? and. I know that we've um, constricted uh, cannabis program reports, but maybe we could include this non-cultivation license. I've been wanting to do that this entire time. Actually, we, we have this product called Open Governance or Transparency Portal for the budget. We're developing reports that are going to report out on the CFBLs as well as the map location feature. So that's going to be launching in the next like four to six weeks. And that will be updated either hopefully on a weekly basis, probably at a minimum on a monthly basis, so that anyone that wants to know can pull that data themselves. We're also working on cultivation, which is a little bit more. No, if the way the data is pulled is not as easy. So you can take it and graph and pull your own. Can I ask a question? So we're working on it. That one's going to be later. CSBL will be first. Hannah, I think Hannah. Is that Hannah? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, have, hi, I Hannah. have two questions. One, hi. Uh, one question is in that reporting, can you have the breakdown between the different types of licenses? Because a lot of people got local uh, distributor transport only licenses, and I think that they are in kind of a, a different league than some of these other more intensive. Uh, non-cultivation business licenses. So I think it would be helpful to kind of break that out as a separate uh, reporting. It's, it's, it's going to be, um, I would say check out our open gov platform and how we do finance because it's going to be very similar. We'll have some standard reports that you can see, but essentially all the data will be there for you to play with and you can pull out what information you want. So if you oh, only care great. about distribution, you only pull Wait, distribution. I, sure. So, but I, I guess what I'm saying is distributor transport only as opposed to full distribution, as opposed to manufacturing, as opposed to micro business, as opposed to retail is just so much less involved. And that's why I think it it, it is helpful to separate it as a subcategory or whatever. But the other question that I had, and, and I apologize if this seems a little off topic, but it does relate to whether or not people need administrative permits or not. And that is that there is an, you know, a requirement to qualify 
and and now I'm talking about whether it's a manufacturing or distribution or micro business um, that if you're qualifying under home occupation, 640 square feet is the limit plus one outside non-owner employee. And what I was wondering is whether or not at some point there was some topic at looking at if you're not doing micro business, but you're doing a standalone, um, let's say manufacturing, and you're getting there in terms of the zoning because you have cultivation, but that it's a standalone uh, license and not part of a micro business, is it doable for us to only consider the manufacturing premises when calculating that square footage and not including the cultivation areas and, and particularly the structures used in the cultivation? Because that would help people get out of the administrative permit requirement and if they don't need it for their regular cultivation activities, even though they have storage, harvest storage areas and, you know, whatever, uh, they shouldn't really need it to qualify for a standalone manufacturing or distributor or whatever if they can keep it to under 640 square feet for that activity, that license. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm asking? Um. I'm a little, well, we currently, if they're under that 640, they don't need an administrative permit. Right, but that I, I, would, I would. No, no, no. You're not misunderstanding. the The question was, is that 640 looking at only those activities, or is it looking at all activities? No. So it's not looking at just the manufacturing. I don't. Or, like, if I get a plot plan and they have their building that says that this is the manufacturing building. As long as it's under that 640, I don't touch cultivation, and I don't touch cultivation with micro businesses either. It's Perfect. just the it's just the facilities that I'm Perfect. reviewing. Perfect. Thank you, Vandy. Yep. Does that affect ADA compliance F1 commercial structure? If it's under 640. Building department. Building official. And they're not Sorry. here. They're not here. So, so I mean, I'm just trying to find a way. They're so buried in it. They don't even. We can have. I could have. I could have one come over to one of the meetings. You could. Oh, you did. They're not backing off on that one. There's no other jurisdiction, does it? Right. Without F ones. So if I had, like if they had a structure they're using, because even if you have a, dis a distribution transport light that you were talking about, I have one of those, and you had, and I had it with the state for a while too. And you have to just the building that you're using. You have to do all the, the cameras and whatnot, but it's not ADA compliant. It didn't have to be ADA right. compliant with the state or the but county. You, but since you're doing distribution, you don't have public. Uh, you know, no, but no, even in but even if it was micro business and it was cultivation, distribution, transport, and say manufacturing, not for, actually leave out manufacturing, retail, non storefront, right? Just take those three. Right. Would you be able to use a very small, less than 600 square foot building that exists and that like we use for distribution transport light and distribution transport with the state, can that qualify for micro business in the county? For planning, yes. For okay, building, that's for... That, I think that's different question. That's, yeah, different. that's California that's building important. code. Because that would, that would help a lot of people. Because a lot of people have that distribution Remember, transport. He's just looking at the use. I'm, and then Mike's group looks at California Building uh, Code compliance. Right. But every time that comes up, and that's exactly where it always happens, is it a business? And as soon as you say it's a business, and they go, oh, well, it's F1 compliant commercial space. Yeah. But even if nobody's going there, even if it's a business like cultivation that you're already doing, you have to just drive your stuff, nothing is changing. Again, this conversation, well, we would need a building inspector. Okay, so it's we don't, that like because that's work super, work. that would change. If we could figure that and out, less than six months before they, have, they used to come to these meetings. When well, Sean used to come in now, building division is understaffed, yeah. and trying to figure out who's kind of taking Sean's place. Yeah. Isn't it just a building inspector? 
No, we should. We'll see if we get Mike to come to okay. the next meeting, and then you can ask him questions on. Do you want me to go see F1. if Mike's available? I think he's in Fort Bragg. Mm -hmm. He's here today. Oh, is he here? Why, can go yeah, why don't you go see? Can you ask that one question? Yeah. Sure. I can do it. First of all, I love this. Mm -hmm. If that would work. Okay. And you're not manufacturing. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of, right? Processing manufacturing. Okay. Oh, uh, people like I talk to them on the phone and they so come in person. What about the thresholds for tier micro business? Less than a six hundred forty square feet. I'm, I'm trying to move the meeting along here. Thresholds for what size? I did not have that discussion. Yes, I, mean, I was I confused as to what we meant in micro business. Here. Like oh. when I apply to the state, I just probably like every state. other tier um, C and I But you mean the size of what? Size of the, the, the cultivation, size of the building, size of the normal I don't know. I didn't I was just talking about Yes, ma'am. So, hey, yeah. yeah. hey guys. So it kind of is. Hello? Hello? Does anyone remember what the threshold for tier micro business systems was? The threshold for what? So, so what, what I have, have so we we kind of agree that this group wants to recommend standalone micro business. I mean, it's kind of why it works. Yeah. We agree that we want to evaluate a pathway to use administrative permits instead of minor major use permits for micro business. And the third one was the group brought up the topic of thresholds for tiered micro business system, but we didn't talk about what that would be. So what were you guys thinking of tiers? I thought it was size and price. Well, you know, tiers were tied to revenues in the state system. Yeah, state. Okay. Revenues. So yeah, there's different levels, like if you're under a million women. I, well, I get that. Yeah. But I don't know what other tiering we were discussing. I don't remember um, talking tiers. I mean, I get that because they tier your fee. Right, right. Uh -huh. The fee is $60. So are you talking about a tier and the size? I mean, over the county, you mean $60? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know what you mean by tier at a county level. I don't county know. I don't, I don't know. know. I just know what it says. And person. I can't remember who brought it up. Me neither. I, don't, I didn't. So I'm not really quite sure what that would I don't know. Maybe we should no. drop it because no one really knows or cares. No. Yes, it is. Because so like if you have AP, you have yeah. to AP. Yeah. Sure. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know yeah. what that even was about. Because the state hero not exactly was the size of the... You guys are wonderful. Yeah, because it's a revenue generator. You have to less than 10,000 square feet. So, basically, that's the same thing, right? I don't know if anyone really wants to know that. At least you give her that lady. No, she does whatever she wants. I don't remember that. was better either. The three things that we had that were like the first one to talk about were those three. And I think we agree on the first two, and I just don't remember who brought that up or what they meant by tiers yeah. or thresholds for Yeah, that tier thing throws me too. Like, I like when you talk about the size of a building or how many parking spaces you're going to have or how many customers are going to come and go or trucks come and go well, from your site or, you know. Is that what they meant? Uh, no, I think it was Manners. size and price, like but size, or yeah. revenue. How many I, units in your yeah. hotel? How many, you know? Or revenue, but if it's only $60, I mean, you know, are those fees going up like every other fee? <laughs> of course. They, I mean, I think what we did, this is regular business license, not facility. I think the fee for regular business license has been the same for over 20 years. I don't think it's changed. No, it hasn't. Yeah. It hasn't changed, like in 2017. But it it went from 130 to 168. No, not that, the actual renewal. And that, oh, your, sorry. Okay. There's a one-time fee when you right. go through the planning inspection. Not like your renewal for That's your 40. license. But the non-cultivated, the non-cannabis, I'm pretty sure that we very rarely touch the business license fee. We don't, our model is not like other counties' models or cities. Actually, cities usually do your business license based on your gross receipts. They mm -hmm. don't do that. Yeah. So, yeah, every city, that's, that's how they do it. Yeah. So are we getting rid of thresholds then? Since no one knows what we're talking about. Oh, tiers. Uh, tiers. We don't know what that is. Well, threshold. I don't remember tiers. what it's about. Is and there tiers anything? is an amount of money you spend. We didn't want to I don't even remember talking about that. I don't either. I don't remember tiers discussed. The license Yeah, but we don't. Maybe it, was, maybe it wasn't very important, obviously. I don't know. It was the. Not the wholesale value. It was the what? On last week's notes, or last meeting's notes, it was the very last thing we 
brought up before convening. What? Yeah, I wasn't what? here. I left early. I think we're talking about 60 bucks. Yeah, we don't need really? to. Really? That's not like, really? That's the fee we're talking about. Because when you get an okay. administrative so permit, you get an administrative yeah. permit. And it's so so how do we know I don't know what that's about. I don't, I don't know. It all sounds good to me. What is there other areas of micro business we haven't oh. discussed that you want to include in the recommendation here. besides the standalone and the admin permit? Missing it. Well, it sounds like the tiered thing came up in the very first meeting at which Mary Lynn was still here, so oh. I could reach out to her and see if she remembers what. I think it was something to do with the process, which maybe we, we it matched. Matching the state so process? You don't, you don't that's want based on low. No, no, I know. No, no. that's based no. on revenue. Who wants to? Yeah. Maybe I we were talking that we thought that micro businesses should be micro, and that that's where the cheering word came in. Because oh, that might be. Them small, and not get into the tiers of that's the state that have multiple millions of dollars. Micro yeah, and I think we're talking so about like a right. standalone license that right. is pretty standard. But I don't so think like we set a cap of any kind. I don't think we talked so we're about, talking a cap. about We just wanted them to stay smaller. Well. Yeah. But the way we're setting it up is it doesn't, we don't we'll do business with you regardless of which one you are. Yeah. Because so to, to the local this more, I think, with the land use component that we're trying to work through so that mm -hmm. small guys can, can get the do line. it besides just the big guys. Well, but I think Corinne brings up, brings up a good point. There needs to be a cap. Out yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was always a small guy. To keep it micro. Yeah. I think that's what the discussion was. So that you're not going to issue a, a business license under micro business to, a, you know, a corporation who's coming in here and making, although it's kind of hard to imagine, but making, you know, $500 million. That's not a micro. I don't think so we have we treat anyone the same. <coughs> but that may be a fallacy in our planning. If you're, the property you own complies <coughs> with the use allowed on the property, it goes forward. Great. You meet the regulations, it goes forward. We don't. Yeah. Unless, unless you have a complaint. Code well, <laughs> or you go the way of some communities like Redwood Valley who want to do a community plan, and then you, you do your plan. Well, or the county leaders step up and say, no, we're small business cannabis county. Again. And, and they direct the book, staff. But what's on the books is what the staff enforces. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's going to take the leadership yeah. to okay. to come to that mm -hmm. supportive small business. And what I'm hearing awesome. is that this threshold for tier micro business systems is just what we're talking about, to cap it so that there aren't major players doing the micro business. So what you guys want, then you want to tell the board you you don't want any big Correct. Uh, business, you don't want any large like Flocanas? Yeah. You, like you don't want like the boutique well, sorry, like Walmart. It's like, right? yeah. I mean, you don't so want something like that. You only, after, Flocana can stay, but everybody else well, must, micro be, business. Mi, mi, must be miniature versions of Flocana. Not no, necessarily no, miniature versions of Flocana, but the micro business license itself should be for like yeah, Flocana's not, yeah. Flocana's not a micro, micro business. Yeah, they have totally where the tiering comes in. What? I don't, what, Paul? That's where, that's where the tiering comes in. So this is not, in the state regs, you could rent a building the size of Costco, <coughs> excuse me, and do as, as uh, you know, purchase 500 tons of cannabis and manufacture, distribute, and retail. But the tiering it is for the small operator who has, and, and by the way, for the state for cultivation is 10,000 square feet of canopy is small, and it's the maximum in, in Mendocino County. So in order to do this the tiering, but that's what we were talking about, is having it so that in Mendocino County, you, you would be able to cater to the small farmer, which is 90% of the people that are here, the people that are that are wanting the micro business, um, so the state would allow people like Flocana and, God forbid, Cordova, to 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 come in and and do a micro business under those terms. 
but to have it tiered so that, that there's something that, that would give people to help level the playing field for the small farmer, the small operator. Because under the current conditions, you have to have a value-added product in order to be a small farmer and, and make it because you just can't do it selling flowers if you're a small farmer. So the thing, the problem I'm hearing is our system is not set up to do that. I mean, we're talking about a land use regulation, defining what can take place at a property. So I get what the state's doing and how they're doing it is, is with a monetary dollar value. Yeah, but, but it, what it's, it's, it's shutting down is, all the well, boutique people. About like, we're, we can't we're talking Walmart. about changing our land use regulations yeah. so you can use your land to com to get your state license. Because if we can get your land, we're low we're low threshold. Biggest threshold is getting your, your buildings and getting the land use. But once you get that, which is our purview, you know, that's where I'm confused about what would be next. Because right now we're talking about changing the I agree with you. It's kind of like two different... Well, it sounds to me like it wouldn't be a micro business. That wouldn't be a micro business license. That would be something else. And, 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 there, and that's the cap that Corinne was talking about. Micro business can only go up to this, whatever that is, and then beyond that is a non-micro business. Right. And then whoever, you know, whoever the business is, they're getting a full bar. And that's what Flocana does. Flocana doesn't have a micro. Right. So yeah. And I, the, so I think you just mentioned it, the, one of you mentioned it, that micro businesses, both at the county and state level, or maybe it was Paul, um, are limited to, if you're going to do a micro business with cultivation, you cannot have any more than 10,000 square feet. True. Right. So it's no, I mean, I mean, the, the 10,000 square feet of cultivation includes your drying shed, your processing area, and everything according to the state. It's not canopy. I just don't That's know. your cultivation area. Outside of the cul outside of talking about this in terms of cult uh, micro business with cultivation, obviously we can make changes when you guys can actually get into the game, but I'm just a little confused about like when you still take out cultivation. Take it out. They're not doing it. I don't really think the way it were, our the way the county government runs and their job is land use that we have the ability to say no to someone if they buy them the yeah. sure Oh, to hold on. This county but, I mean, has already done that sort of thing I mean, when they I'm said wondering, are you cannot have limits? I mean, there's one anybody thing if it's like a but, well, there should be one for industrial so, when we, 20, we went into but, the facility <laughs> ordinance, yeah. I think it, this, but the facility ordinance <laughs> never got the time and attention as cultivation. Mm -hmm. So this ordinance was developed as we want to allow all, no, we want to allow all the different license types of the state and we want the lowest barrier possible. So that's how this baby was birthed. And when it first, and we've never gotten the micro business right. Part of it is because it's been a moving target since day one. So that's for sure micro business is, it just is what it is. It never was done right. But, but the, it, their point is they, they want a cap. But my point is something in addition to that, yeah. and probably different than the way you're seeing things, because it's your job. But the supervisors wrote in to the current ordinances all kinds of prohibitions, and one of them definitely is that, like any other business, you can't sell your farm to somebody and have them continue cultivating. I can't either. So my point is in cultivation. But my point is they have written that into an ordinance. They can write another kind of control economic factor into the non cultivation ordinance pertaining to caps on micro business revenue category. That's all I'm saying. They can do it if they want. And that's a really good point, Corinne. You have a very good point. They can do whatever they want. So then that would go in and do the, probably the other, the, that would go into 6.36. I, I really yeah. am not sure where it would care where we put it, but all I'm saying. Well, it matters because. Well, of course it does, here, but that's not what we're doing. We're not writing it today. We're just saying they can write it any way they want. That's my point. And they do. So if they want to change it, they want to make it more possible, they want to include some different zones, they can do that. So I think we've come to the conclusion that the threshold is size and caps on businesses, which would go into 6.36. It, it wouldn't be in the discussion here on 20.4. 
They would be six point three six. Okay. And, I'm not and she's did you hear Sarah, she said it's on square footage and you're talking about revenue, so you've got to get that one aligned here. Right. Would you like coordinate with the state? Well I think it should. So if you're going if you want to do that a cat if that was something that you took to them, so Two, 20, the land use is really about how you use the land, not how you um, cap businesses on size based on how much money they're making. That's something that you would have to build in, and if you built it into that scheme, it would be in 6.36. It would not be in, in what we're talking about, which is land use. And how does that affect economic development? I'm very curious about um, that. What do you mean, how do micro-businesses? No, a cap on how many administrative micro-business standalone permits there would be. How well, does that affect you tell me, is it going to generate more business activity or less? If probably it's more, more. If it's more, probably, I'm going to go, I'm going to be excited. If it's probably, less, I'm going to be, oh. Probably oh. more for the, um, for the uh, existing operators and less for the non-existing uh, operators. That's my guess. But I'm asking yeah. you. I As know. someone that has far I, more expertise. I do not have ec economic development expertise in cannabis. I just arrived. Nobody, ha nobody I, I has. Am, and I am reading like a fiend everything I get my hands on. Yeah, don't in believe California. it. California. Don't believe There's it. There's just all kinds of, everybody's all over the place. And everybody's an expert, I might add. And I, Yeah. <laughs> they, it does seem like everybody knows where things are going. I so don't, don't believe everything. So can I ask a question about, uh, and this may be a stupid from your standpoint. When, when we're talking about land use, right, in micro yeah. businesses, and we're, we're discussing like how much traffic it's going to create and stuff like that, yeah. why do we think that cannabis use micro business is going to have different traffic than, let's say, a boutique or a shoe store or a floral house? Is that what our concern is? Like, I feel like if it's. Or, or, or a person that's making marmalade in their kitchen. It's where it goes, but I think the okay. issue is where it goes. And I think that's been the where like, goes. For example, Sorry. on a regular business, mm -hmm. it, we've had people come in who want to do, say, like a major construction thing out of their house. We're not going to let we That doesn't work for us. Can you be more clear about that? Like what? Run their construction business out of their house? Correct. Like they okay. can't be storing their, tr I mean, we'll allow like, you know, a pickup truck that has a trailer with a, a lawnmower on it. Sure. But yeah. we're not going to allow, like, but in the build neighborhood, a, maybe. Build a barn yeah. in the back and have a bunch of processing equipment in a single family neighborhood, you know. True. So that, we're that, talking more about in, in yeah. like so within, I can within the city limits, not yeah. being well, different. Like in the town. In industrial say. areas, yeah. Or, 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 I, would, I don't want to talk about city limits because we just deal with really not this. Okay. Really I'm not sorry, I'm not No, that's okay. Not the expansion of micro business in areas of cultivation, which okay. typically okay. don't have things like distribution. So structure. Where people aren't they coming and going. Allow us yeah. Okay. So you typically okay. wouldn't allow be in a barn. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. So it's really about how do you expand zoning and do the studies to allow more flexibility and zoning that maybe not traditionally would have as much stuff. Right. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's the thing. I want to be clear about that. I was like, visualizing several conversations right. going on at once. Let's just say a really cute, let's just say it's a really cute cannabis shop that has, you know what I mean? Like, so why are we, that's like. Right, right. That is apple it's to apple. It's really hard like to hear right. with all the crazy well, conversations. Yeah. We're, we're shutting it down, yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay, so we got. Before we leave the micro business discussion, though, and we've got Anna, the threshold. Would you explain, but it's Brent. If we talk, you know, you're my friend. Explain to me here what this thing's going to look like, where we can't do it now, but you want to do this micro business. Just walk me through the property. It's got a 10,000 square foot canopy grow, right? Yeah. Maybe there's a house on it. Maybe. Maybe where the. the Probably smaller here. than 10,000. Now what's this? micro business that's going to be added to it look like? Describe the building, what's going on inside. It's a kitchen or a processing. Or but you can't. No, it's Anna. Right Sorry. Law, we Sorry, can't Anna. He's asking you. You can't do it in the house right. by state law. So you're going to have like a thing? metal, commercial metal building. So it's a butler building gets put on the property on a slab. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Is that right, Hannah? Uh, Hannah? I, I, yeah, I'm here. I'm just wondering what the question is exactly. No, this micro business that's not allowed in our code right now. 
Right. What does no, what's the additional is. activity on this property that's out in a what does it look like in this Butler building? Ah, five thousand square foot Butler so, building, ten thousand So here's here's the issue is that there are micro businesses allowed but only in certain zonings and only tied to cultivation and in other areas where it's not tied to cultivation, it's in other limited zoning. So I think there's two separate issues. One is um, if there are ways to free up zoning uh, for micro businesses that are not ans uh, accessory uses to cultivation, and that's the uh, standalone. The, well, it's it's not really a standalone, but it, yes, it's it's um, a micro business with with different uh, activities than cultivation, and and so for example, it would include it would not necessarily it would not be on a cultivation property, and it would include the other three activities, which are retail. Uh, distribution of some sort, whether it's distribution, transport only, or full distribution, and manufacturing. So and that's making the product. I'll give that's you a manufacturing. Big plant. That's Permitted so, metal building. With so so Go ahead, the, the so. issue is expanded um, zoning in this case. You know, we, we acknowledge that uh, the building would have to be, um, you know, addressed if you're doing, well, actually, that's a separate issue. If you're, if you want to do this, let's say, on a rural property and you're only doing these other things, we would have to create almost a lesser category of retail in order for retail to be the third category of activity. So on the one hand, we have the micro businesses by state law have to have three of four activities. If it's, if the activity includes cultivation, then the most likely scenarios is that it's not going to have retail, but it would have the other two categories besides cultivation, meaning some form of distribution and manufacturing, at least at a level one. However, I think that it is very uh, prudent of us to see if there's a way to create a lower level retail that might be applicable for later when the state allows um, direct sales by cultivators, for example, so that a farm stand model which isn't doesn't require the same level of intensity of a full retail that should be let's say located in a commercial zone or something, but can be an accessory use to a cultivation. I really strongly recommend that we see if that's possible, so that retail could be a component of the micro business, even on a cultivation site, even though normally nobody would dream of putting a retail store on most cultivation sites. Hannah, suppose you did something like limiting it to just delivery and events only. So the problem, the delivery would work for sure um, because that is retail, non-storefront retail. I think that's an excellent idea, Paul. And that would, uh, that, would, like that, would also, that would also uh, keep out the, the, the aspect of uh, a public use. So it would be a private thing, and the public is not invited. Yes, that's true. And, and I think that that would be uh, – so, so, Brent, just to kind of separate this out, right, there's two categories of my business, one which includes – cultivation and one that does not. So right now we're talking about the ones that do include it and then I'll switch over to the ones that don't. And the issues for expansion uh, in any direction that we can get it for the ones that include micro business are number one, that, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes the 
added activity or the other micro business activities that are ancillary to the cultivation are not always appropriate for that kind of land and it's difficult for people to pull off. So for example, retail being one of them, and that's why I'm suggesting maybe two other categories of retail that would allow properties Let's just pretend you're in a uh, TPZ and you've got cultivation and normally nobody would dream of allowing a retail thing, but you could create, you could do non-storefront retail and maybe we should also think future forward for when farmers will be able to sell directly and do a miniature version of public retail, but that limits the number of cars and customers per day. The other issue is the Where's level that? of manufacturing. You can't regulate that. Yeah. You can't. You can't. There's no way. <clears throat> so, well, well, you can't, but you, but, but you can, actually. But anyway, the, I think that Paul's idea is an excellent one to definitely do non-storefront retail as a way to get micro-business that they don't want it. let's say they don't want to do manufacturing but they do let's say distro transport only and they do uh non storefront retail i mean they would want to do full distribution self distribution because otherwise how are they going to sell it um and but, i don't believe there's any penalty for not using the retail for not exercising the retail aspect of the license but if you have that, so you have the ability, you have the ability to do the delivery if need be, and you have the ability to go to events and put up your stand and sell at you know at events like the Emerald Cup or what have you. Um, right, but you'd have to you'd have to go through a distributor. So unless you have a distribution license, you would still have to go through a distributor. But you're absolutely that would, that would come with the micro business. Oh, so, yes. Okay, you are I'm going to bring this. Back around, I'm gonna bring this back around just because uh, we have a, it's almost five and we had Mike, Mike join us. So we at least say you wanna pursue a standalone micro business license that allows greater flexibility for farmers. They want a pathway to reduce major and minor use permits for administrative permit. We can agree on that and we can look into that and try to see if we can take some real action. Um, the threshold, 6.36, that could come out as a recommendation should this group want to do that. I know we have, and next time we come in, I really think we need to talk about manufacturing because I think it's really, 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 really important. Yeah, it is. To, that needs to be included with whatever we do. Um, I, I, I don't know, does anyone in this room have a question? I think one person that had a question Kim, left that Kim, for Kim, Mike. She gave me a question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Go for Mike. it. Yeah. I get Mike for him. You know Kim. Kim Tate. Kim Tate. Kim Tate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She's concerned about a micro business potential for a less than 640 square foot structure. Less than 640. Can she use it? Does it still need F1 compliance for micro business activities? And describe those if there's no, if there's no customers on site. Right. Okay, specifically, so, what are is the use? What are, is she going to use it for? I'm sure that she would be using it for uh, manufacturing one, probably packaging, the kinds of things that farmers are allowed to do under a micro-business license. Mm -hmm. Non-volatile manufacturing and packaging and process. Well, I think... So, wait, wait. That's what it was. 600 square feet is the kicker here. And whether whether if there is a building smaller than that, if F1 still applies. Uh, so in the use and occupancy classification chapter three, it does not, in the F1 occupancy, does not list uh, minimum square footages. The answer is if it involves manufacturing or processing, it fits right into the F1 because of the charging statement of the F1, it mentions processing. So the answer is yes. And uh, it, What if it doesn't? Well, what if it only involves distribution? 
Yeah, yeah. what if she's like cultivation yeah, transport we can talk about only and non hypotheticals here. Well she because she said non storefront, I think transport and cultivation. Yeah, she's not she storefront. talking about yeah, so manufacturing. But she wanted to well, she manufacturing. wants manufacturing. Oh so, yeah, she yeah. Did. yeah. You answered so the question. Yeah. You did. And now I've asked the second question sure. is the sure. same scenario taking manufacturing out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's really good. So and, what, and what would you like to use the structure for? Distribution, processing. Processing. Uh-huh. Okay. So processing is in the charging statement of the F1 occupancy. Any structure used for processing fits right in F1. Okay. And so, then you know, it's better than an H. We could I put would it I, H. No one's saying it's bad. Yeah, We're just getting clarification. Some jurisdictions are, are putting these things into H occupancies, and I'm telling you, F1 is much better What's than the H. difference between an H and an F1 on uh, F1. construction? It, what it is is, again, every structure has a use occupancy classification. The H is much more restrictive. It's going to be uh, the type of construction involving the framing and everything else is going to be uh, much more uh, non fireproof. It will be sprinklered. We're at F1. Man, you could build up to, I think it's uh, 12,000 square feet and not be sprinklered. People don't different. realize what a nice occupancy classification F1 is. But F1 does have, it does have an ADA bathroom in it, right? Does it have an ADA bathroom in it? Yeah. Well, all commercial structures yeah. do. I know, and that's yeah. required by the code. It's required by yeah. California state law. Yeah. So then I'm just curious, regardless of the manufacturing, what if it was just distribution and retail delivery where it's not people coming? Right, that was my no next process. question. No, process. Okay. Oh, no okay. processing or manufacturing. Okay. No, no public access. Yes, yeah. right. Okay, mm -hmm. what's going to be happening within that building? Distribution, storage. which is storage, and then retail, non storefront, which is pretty much all storage. Taking stuff, putting in a car, and it leaves the site. Yes, yeah, shipping. shipping. Okay. The storage. So typically a, a retail occupancy is an M occupancy, okay, for mercantile. So uh, there's a slight possibility that a retail occupancy might be into an M occupancy. There's not going to be much difference between an F1 and an M. But what if, but if it's M without, with, if it's, exactly, if it's non-storefront, it's, 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 it's retail with no customers. They are just storing it there Hold on. and taking their car and delivering. Yeah, this is an operation that works with a delivery truck. Okay. And uh, if it's and there's no customers on site. Okay. And they're not even allowed. They have to keep the product that they don't have on the trucks or the cars. They have to have that in the, the location. Someone. The storage. Yes, yeah. It has to be stored yeah. on premise. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. So then now we have an occupancy of an S1 or an S2. Uh, Maybe. Okay. Maybe. So we, we, we look at what's one or S2. We look at the quantities of it. Store S for storage. It's still it's still a, a commercial uh, occupancy classification. Okay. So that means ADA. Um yes. Yes. Yeah. But remember when we talk about disabled access, we're talking about one parking space. Path to travel to the door and a way to get in, and the entire interior and the is a workspace. Yeah. And the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. People so, need to go to the bathroom. So S1, M1, and F1. <laughs> if we line them up in columns, which it would be nice to draw right now, really the difference is the fire sprinkler and the con the way you construct the building itself for fire. That's true. But when we have, when you're talking about man, or, uh, the micro business, it, that's a mixed use occupancy. And you have occupancy separation walls when you have mixed use. So uh, it depends on what that mixed use is. If you have a retail, a manufacturing, and a storage, you're going to have different rated occupancy separation walls that protect those interior spaces for fire purposes. And would you need to get three different permits for the three different? No. Just one, one permit. permit. It's under one roof. It's just construction types. Got it. Got it. It's one permit. One okay. plan, one permit. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. How much are those? S1s, M1s, and F1s. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a that's a loaded question. Well, it depends on it depends on, plan, right? it depends on the construction market. How busy your region is. Is this brand new construction? We're looking at the three columns here, folks. Same 
same building, 641 square feet. Um, you know, we're not changing anything of what we've been discussing. What, when we line the three columns up, what are oh. the differences in cost between? At those two, three different kinds of occupancy yes. structures? Yes. All things being equal. Uh, storage <laughs> structures do have a, a slightly less fee. Uh, when you take an existing structure and you remodel that existing structure, that is going to be based on a job cost, which is labor and materials. When you build a new structure from the ground up, that gets a new square footage structure, which is feed out differently. But we're in the column again. But S and N, wait, no, yeah. M and S are similar in price. You want to know S what the cost slightly. difference is? Yeah. Like how much? It's going to be ten grand for this one, twenty grand. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the you're talking about the building permit, or you're talking about the cost yeah. of the building? I the think building. you're talking about cost. We we have right. a fee schedule. You right. know that we can refer to on the fee schedule, uh -huh. and our admin staff can help you with the fee schedule. And your fee is also, really not late. No. Are you talking about the? I think she wants to know what's the no, permit no, no, or the no. construction of the building. The permit, the permit itself. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sure. That's all we're talking. Not about. Not construction permit. No. Uh, yes, it's no. a construction permit. Well, it's it's. From the planning department yeah, or building, building department. Building yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have a fee schedule. It's planning, it's health department. There's a number of different agencies that have that their piece of the pie. Yeah. Right, but we're just talking to Mike here, folks. Yeah. So how, much, how much per foot is an F1 structure cost? There you go. Thank uh, you. So and I'm not going to, and Mike, our, we're not our holding. Our fee schedule is, is like this. I'm not going to quote a price without our fee schedule in front of If you're off, I, you know, it's hard to do it. Yeah, there's too many different components. No, I don't. I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> Mike, so you can said. go to the counter and ask for Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, he always. No, no he always refers After to five somebody else. Stuff. I. No, he, entire, Adrian. Our entire staff has the fee schedule. It, when we do our plans, the fee schedule, the, the plans and fees are sent to our admin staff to yeah. calculate. Yeah, that's right. Mike yeah. always refers to the admin staff for fees. I just want to know about the difference. I'm so glad you were here. Thank you. And thank you for I calling Mr. Oliphant. We're, we're kind of I think you can help me there. The end. We have some agreements. Next meeting, manufacturing. Yes. Yep. Okay. And update on what we talked about. March 7th. Manufacturing. Thank you for the clarity. I'll, I'll look at the fee schedule. Same time. You gave me the fee schedule, but it's the old fee. But it is building. All right. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Vandy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, buddy. Amanda. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Stands with an A. Amanda. Amanda for setting everything up. <laughs> He's already left. He's gone. Um, okay. Yeah. And the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later.